Hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to be uh, showing you how to paint um, from this flower art coloring book. You can get at Michael's and paint along with me. I also painted this lily painting in the same fashion from this book and you can check that video out. It's on my channel if you care to. So this is what the book looks like. It's by Creative Haven and it's flower art. It's got these women on it dressed in flowers and inside is a bunch of um, line art that you can color in and what I do is I transfer that line art um, using my Huion light table which is awesome you can get it on Amazon uh, one of the best things I've ever bought it's about $119 Canadian uh, but there's different sizes and you just tra I'm just um, transferring it onto the watercolor paper here but this is a different technique that I'm using here using Winsor & Newton watercolor markers I'm also at the same time demoing these markers, how they work, and trying out um, a technique for myself. So instead of tracing the drawing with pencil or transfer paper or micron pens onto the watercolor paper, then just um, watercoloring it in after, I'm going directly with these markers. Uh, right onto the watercolor paper and then I'm just gonna go in with some water after and sort of mess around with it and touch it up and see what happens. Um, right off the bat I'm not crazy about this method. Um, I don't really know. The good thing about these markers is that they are extremely light fast and they're artist quality just like the Winsor & Newton paints. So the paint is light fast, it's gonna last a long time and that's really important to me. So it's profes professional grade materials here. However, in this marker form, um, I mean, they're really good for details and things like that, but I prefer the wash in wash, the watercolor washes where you can um, drop color into the wet and let it expand and, and all that, like, like watercolor does. So this is a very strange sort of way to apply watercolor because it, um, I don't know, it's just different. And in the end, I'm not that happy with the painting. It doesn't look great, but I'm just gonna use it for a card. Uh, I'm gonna turn it into a card and if the person feels like framing it or keeping it, I'm sure they'll keep it, but probably not frame it. Um, it's not up to my standards anyway for like displayable wall art, but it'll make a good card. Um, you know, for a handmade special card for someone. Um, also, I can demo this technique for you so you can paint along with me using this Michael's book. You could go get the book. They're around $10 each. Um, and you can also check out, um, I have other um, videos on my channel that are using this method as well. So you can paint along with me or just watch and use the techniques for yourself or and just see what happens. So I'm also using Letraset aqua markers as well because I find the Letraset aqua markers are brighter in general than the Winsor & Newton are the typical like muted natural colors which is of course we need both, right? So I have uh, a good set of both markers, the Winsor & Newton and the aqua markers. So I'm just coloring in the green here and I started out with the outline of the dark green and then I'm going in with the sort of brighter green uh, I think from the aqua marker to fill in the center and then for the mums I just uh, sometimes it's hard to see through the paper I'm just I'm not exactly tracing either I'm just kind of getting the um, the shapes from the tracing through the paper which is kind of interesting so uh, in a way it's your own art in that you're not st I'm not sticking staying true to the exact line form behind it I'm just kind of um, you know going with the shape in the general area of where things are and you can see with the leaves I just quickly drew them on you know in my own way and it's useful to turn off the light table sometimes to see how your picture looks. So that's what I did there.
Okay, so turn the light box off and magically appears my um, drawing that basically looks like it was done by a four-year-old child at this point. But whatever, I'm just discovering this medium and experimenting with different ways. So right here I'm just kind of putting my own uh, little details in and going in with the darker red to um, tighten things up a bit and uh, put some darks in there. And soon I will be going in with my water brush and let's see what happens. Okay, so now I'm just going into my uh, brush case and um, I'm going to pick a watercolor brush that's natural Kalinsky sable hair and it's by Escoda, which those brushes are a really good quality and they're made in Spain. And it's about, I'm using about a size three, three or four. I think it might be three. And I'm just going in now with some clear water and seeing what happens with these markers. I know that these markers, when you lay them down, um, it's very hard to scrub out the line that they make. And I think that I would like them more if it was easier, if that line sort of disappeared a bit more. Um, but maybe not. Maybe that's, uh, you know, what their function is, is to define the shape very well so that the uh, paint goes down into the fibers and then it keeps the line there. So as you can see, I'm just scribbling over the whole thing with water, um, which is kind of quick and easy if you think about it. You just draw it on with your marker and then just I'm just going over the oranges and the pinks and the reds mixing them together here. Um, of course it's a delicate balance between losing too much of your um, definition, your lines, and spreading out the color. So that's just a matter of playing with it and seeing what you like. And then at the very end, if you've diffused it too much, you can always just go in with the marker again and uh, create a little bit more definition. So there's, it's, paintings can obviously be never ending. <laughs> and uh, it's very easy to overwork it. But, so I'm being conscious of that here. And so look what I'm doing. I'm just going over basically like a kid would do and just, scribbling it o scribbling over it so in that way these are very easy if you want to whip off a quick um, card I know this is longer than some people would like to take but you don't have to take this long you could just do say a simple couple of blossoms you could just do that really quickly and then quickly go over it with water maybe one leaf um, but this video is long to uh, show you and demos demonstrate these markers and how they act. So, and just for you to, uh, if people don't know how to paint, to uh, watch what I'm doing and hopefully learn a thing or two and um, learn about this medium along with me.
Okay, so up till now I've been sort of satisfied how these react, these markers. Um, but here's where we run into problems. So now I'm going for a nice, even, sort of light uh, grayish blue shadow, right? And there's no way with putting it directly on the paper that I could achieve um, <laughs> that you know I would have to scribble off in a palette to get to to diffuse the color enough to get a nice light bluish gray cool cast shadow for this object and also the other thing is drawing on the paint as you can see the swirls I did there um, they're not diffusing out and no matter what I do I can't get rid of those swirls so I just left them there I mean whatever it, uh, you know I I learned from that so I know not to do that now um, if if you want a cool uh, a shadow that's lighter in pigment you're gonna have to scribble off in your palette and just take a lot of water and uh, and put it in so it's kind of giving it an abstract um, look though with this swirly shadow which is sometimes cool you know it doesn't look like a photo, it looks more like art, so sometimes I like that. So I'm just putting on a little indication of a table here, and I'm just letting things blend together because I don't really care about this painting, it's more for demonstration purposes, and letting the, the blue and the warm color bleed together. And I'm hoping that those lines will go away, but they're not going to, so that's all right so just twirling my brush here trying to figure out how to salvage this and what to do next and so that's exactly what I did is mixed some light blue gray shadow color and background color on a palette to the right and hopefully um, that will uh, save the shadow. I will, I'll fix that in a minute and you'll see. So I'm brightening up the background color there with the aqua, um, the Letra Set brighter blue to, uh, in a, as opposed to the grayish shadow color. I'm brightening it up with a brighter blue in the background. And as you can see, I'm purposely touching the green. That's not a mistake. I want this to be very loose and watercolory-y. So I'm purposely letting the green bleed into the background. People might be cringing right now. Um, but it's kind of, I'm not attached to this picture. This is more for demonstration and just fooling around with the medium. So I'm experimenting with letting the foreground bleed into the background. Um, I think it's a little too tight uh, of the lines. They're too uh, structured to have that look fully. But I'm letting it go here. I want it to kind of like I almost I'm taking the brush here and going you see I'm just kind of scribbling all around the background so it kind of bleeds into each other I'm defying the uh, structured line of that marker I'm sort of saying no I'm not going to stay in your boundary and letting the water um, pull its watercolor rebelness on these <laughs> on the lines so uh, anyway, it's it may end up looking a bit messy, and it may end up looking good. I don't know, but this is my first time fooling with these markers, so whatever happens, happens. But I like I like how it looks bleeding in like that. So, and I'm sure uh, at the end, even at um, what you do with the end of this picture, I could go in with a like a white jelly roll and maybe even a pit, um, a pit or a micron black marker and just sort of do little embellishments and make it look really artsy. 
you know, so there's lots of ways you can save it or change it sort of thing if you want to make it look really artsy. So I'm going to use this for a card though, I think, and um, for a nice watercolor look card. Okay, so now, as you can see, as I've watercolored the heck out of these flowers in the pot, I'm now, I let it dry and bleed <laughs> and do what it wants. Now I'm going to come back in like a good artistic mother and rein in my child and go back in with a little more structure, uh, a little more structured lines and strengthening the colors um, and make them deeper where they should be like the center of the flowers maybe bring out a little bit more of the petals and diffuse uh, bring out some structured lines on the leaves and also diffuse them a bit make some stronger shadows there as you can see I'm doing there I'm just drawing on you know drawing on the details again because now it's all watercolored out. These are relatively sharp leaves so it's uh, it's easy to fake realism with all those little sharp edges and stuff like that. And then after it's gonna become a little too sharp again and then I'll go in with less water this time and diffuse it out just a little bit and the end result is kind of cool. Another point I'd like to make here is even though you've used the line art for the basic structure of this flower pot, in the end you can be happy that it is a work of art of your own because look at how many liberties I've taken with um, the leaves. It's no longer the lines anymore that you started with, right? Um, it's now a painting and it's your own, it's your painting. So you can feel free to give this to a family member or or whatnot and say you painted it. Um, all the great artists um, used tools to help them along such as tracing, light tables, transfer paper, um, oh I forget the name of the th contraption but it's a thing the old masters used to use where it's an actual scope that you set up and you look through and it bounces the image in front of them onto the paper or canvas that they're working on and it like flips it backwards and and down and uh, I'll come up with the name of that thing but it's uh, a thing the old masters used to use and then they would paint over the image that was reflected down in front of them onto their surface so that's just an interesting little um, art history tidbit that you may not have known. So if you Google that, um, oh, I should really come up with the name of it. Okay, I'll go look it up and I'll tell you. Okay, I just looked it up and uh, I knew it had camera in it, but it's called a camera lucida. And so it's an optical device that they would set up that bounces the image um, to horizontally and then down vertically down to the uh, space in front of them and then they would paint over it. So you can check Wikipedia on that. There's actually an app you can get to for your iPhone or your iPad or whatever. I'm not sure if it's on uh, Android but you can get this app called Camera Lucida L-U-C-I-D-A and check that out and um, maybe use it just like the old masters did.
Okay, so now in the end, um, I'm almost finished this painting, but I'm just going in uh, with a, I mixed a little brown, um, a dark color to just sort of bring out the bottom petals of the leaves and the illusion of uh, more separated petals here. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Um, I have other videos on my channel where you can buy that book from Amazon or Michaels and paint along with me. So please sub, please give me a thumb, thumbs up if you liked it, and have an artsy, crafty day.